<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Manhattan Beach Community Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether or not you have a voice, you can stay. Welcome to uh, MECC and Super Bowl Sunday. I have a theory that there are two kinds of football fans. One kind is the kind of football fan that is currently at home preparing for the Super Bowl party. The other kind is the kind that comes to church thinking that just in case God is watching, we'll be in church. My name is Mark Pettis and I am privileged to serve as senior administrator at MCC. We have no real interest as an organization in Super Bowl, but uh, I'm sure you all do. And I am privileged to welcome you on behalf of myself, on behalf of our worship assistant, Kate Lufkin, and on behalf of our, well, not really a guest preacher, our preacher this morning, our youth ministry in Colonel Jackson here. Today is one of those days where I have way too many things to talk about in the welcome, so I'm going to start going into it. First off, let me um, remind us that we have pew books on the inside edge of the pews. I invite you to find those and sign those and pass them down to you for that. Uh, we we'll already talked about Super Bowl. I want to extend a special greeting and thank you to Candice Ford, who is our guest director for our choir this morning. And this Sunday is a Sunday of some announcement type stuff. Um, if you are on our email distribution list, you received an email this past Thursday awkwardly announcing twice in one email um, <laughs> something. But our Minister of Faith Formation, Bob uh, Hager, has been called to a, another position at a church in Los Angeles, First Congregational of Los Angeles. And we all found out this week that she will be departing. And I want to give us a chance to start our thank yous and our, our not farewells yet, we've got a couple of months, but our thank yous to all these with us this morning. And I'd like her to stand up and receive some. Symbolizing that God's love for us is eternal, is evergreen, 
and what is present with us now differently remains. And so I ask us to, to pause for just a moment um, in our own work. And with that, I would like to have four of our racial friends and help us promote these hands. Morning. If this is your first time at NBCC, welcome. And there's a newcomer, newcomer's table located in the front of the church before and after the worship service. There's also a nursery care available in the Christian Education Building. Today is the Super Bowl of Caring, so after church, the youth will be standing outside the sanctuary with pots to collect money to fight hunger in our annual Super Bowl of Caring Fund. <coughs> The youth should head to the office after communion to meet the end to prepare. If you're interested in a board position, there's information on the back. And the Mariners, please rise for our marvelous Marty Ball on Saturday, February 10th at the Cooper's French Quarter. Excellent. Each Sunday when we gather for worship, we gather to reconcile ourselves with God through the atmosphere. But we begin each Sunday by first reconciling to one another. And in our congregation, we do that through the passing of peace. As you can tell by my voice, you probably don't want to shake mine. <laughs> um, and given the season we're in, I invite us to share a word of peace with whatever gesture works best for you. Good morning, guys.
the journey, a journey to grow deeper in our faith and our love. Along the way, remind us of your love and of your sacrifice for us and of your ever mindful presence. Let us never lose hope along the way. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer.
with James and John. Now Simon's mother in was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve. So, pretty close. <laughs> I think that's fun. And the thing about it is this. The Bible means many different things to many different people, right? And the way we read it um, sometimes can be more fun, sometimes more serious. And it has serious messages and sometimes fun messages. It's a very interesting book when you spend some time with it. And so this morning, you all are going to go to kids' church and do some stuff, maybe around the scripture. Yes, around the scripture. So probably, probably this version. But I'm going to give this version the ball in anything. So in case you guys want to work with Anthony above and you know, quarterbacks and in the shape. Um, and we're going to hear more about this from Jackson. Before y'all go, let's have a prayer together. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be creative. To see things in our own special way. Bring ourselves into our church. We thank you for each person who is here today, each person who is part of our congregation, each person who is part of our life. We thank you for being part of our life as well. We pray all this, O God, in your most holy name, and all of God's children say, Amen. All right? Have fun at this church.
in our services, we move ourselves into prayer. We know we have much to lift to God in prayer. I invite us to open our hearts and our minds and center ourselves in this time. A few deep breaths. As we consider all of those who have been prayed this morning. This Sunday, as is our custom, we offer prayers for people around the world, and in particular this week for the people of Andorra, Italy, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, and Vatican City, as part of the Ecumenic Prayer Cycle. Given all that is happening in our nation, we pray for our leaders that they may make decisions that take into consideration the needs of all people. We pray for those in need in our community and in our nation. In our congregation, we offer prayers for Madeline and the entire Carter family. We pray for Phil, Pat, Marie, Carol, Krista, Jean, and Michael. Invite us this time to share those names that are on our hearts that we choose to lift with our voices. <coughs> Chuck Dalbert. Draw near to us, God, and continue to be our rock. <coughs> Encourage us to reach out to others. Extend a steady hand. Comforting hug. Calming word. Pray all of this, O God, in most holy name. The Spirit of Christ draws us together, holds us together as we well. Amen. This morning's scripture passage is Mark 1, verses 29 to 39, and can be found on page 813 of your Bible. As 
soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with fevers, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. I have to say, I, I would wish that Caden had the bad most version of reading. <laughs> I love um, so this summer, as many of you know, um, some of you in Honolulu. Uh, Spare me too many details. Uh, w R Y E or Rye is a big UCCU gathering that's held every four years, uh, alternating with National Youth Event. Um, every other two years, kind of the way those the Olympics do, but some of them are um, as you'll remember, in 2016, we went to the National Youth Event in Orlando, Florida. I made a great time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but one thing the kids, as well as myself, were understandably upset about was that they had to cancel the community service uh, projects that we signed up to do because it was too hot. <laughs> Instead, uh, they took us on a bus to a nearby church where we heard a couple of speakers. The second one was a guy who was well acquainted with the research on what is known as the five love languages. Some of the kids were disappointed, as was I, that we weren't doing the community service projects, but I encouraged them to really listen because I read about it before and I found it very ethical. If you've ever heard of the five love languages, it's a good, perhaps a little oversimplified, way of looking at that truth that people show to care in many different ways. I won't go through them now, but we all know people in our lives who say, appreciate it more than anything when we give them gifts even really small things that we found at Kmart or Target. For people who act like we just saved their lives when we bring them a cup of water, but they ask for but they couldn't care less if we got them something for their birthday or This is useful to think about because one of the big takeaways from it is that sometimes we take it the wrong way or don't recognize it when people show us their love in ways that we don't necessarily tend to show ours. Or vice versa, when they don't show us their love as we would show them ours. For instance, take my mom. <laughs> She's right over there. By the way, I asked for permission to use her in my sermon, and she said, yes, as long as she could issue a disputing memo. <laughs> um, sometimes when I'm over at her house watching The Bachelor, I admit it, we do it every week. It's true. Um, no, she She'll start asking me all sorts of questions about whether I'm comfortable whether I'm sitting on the right couch, whether the heat is too high, whether my food is cold, any comfier pants, etc. And my response is always, oh my gosh, no mom, I'm fine. <laughs> Actually, in fact, sometimes I feel a cough coming on. <coughs> I try to hold it back because I know that uh, the moment that she hears it, she's going to start asking if I'm okay. <laughs> Actually, this happened a week ago, and I was like, no, I'm fine, and then I'm sick, so. <laughs> She's often right, and I usually, even if I don't know that she did, so. Um, but my guard almost always goes up, and the truth is, of course, that this is one of the ways that she expresses love, and shows that she worries and cares about me and loves me. But it's not always how I would personally show it to someone else. It gets on my nerves sometimes, but I always remember that it's because she worries about me. And of course I know that I have uh, plenty of annoying habits. 
that I'm sure she can attest to. Uh, but it's important to have these people who care about you and worry in your life. In the scripture passage that Kate read, we meet who I see as the warriors in Jesus' life, his companions, his disciples, his friends. After Jesus heals a bunch of people at Simon's house, including Simon's mother-in-law, he goes off without telling anyone to pray as Jesus would want to do. His friends go searching for him, and when they find him, they go, Jesus, everyone's looking for you. Where did you go? Now, I imagine the disciples were worried about him, as anyone would be, about their friend or their teacher or their son or daughter who disappears. And Jesus responds to the people that were worrying about him. Without missing a beat, he responds with, all right, got to go preach and heal some more people. Let's go. So after searching for him, actually hunting is one translation puts it, so it was likely quite a while, he immediately moves on to the next thing. He doesn't give them a chance to rest. It makes me think of like when there's like a group of people hiking and two people go ahead of everybody else and then the other the kind of stragglers try to catch up and then immediately when they catch up, the other people start going again, don't give them a chance to rest. <laughs> uh, Jesus has a lot of work to do and he's not stopping the rest. And for whoever's following him, they're not going to rest either. He doesn't make it easy on his followers. More than just his followers, he really doesn't make it very easy for anyone. Included in this passage, the very people that he heals. For instance, in this instance in this passage, when he's finished healing Simon's mother-in-law, she gets up and begins to wait on him. This is an interesting pattern to notice with the people that Jesus heals. Right when they're healed, they get rid of him. In fact, right after this passage, Jesus heads out into the city and heals a man with leprosy. Then he tells him to go and sacrifice as Moses commanded. Not an invitation to get comfortable and rest, not to sleep it off and need a break, but rather to move and to do. See, I would say that Jesus came to heal, but he rarely intends to comfort. Comfort can, be, com can become complacency, and that is just the opposite of what Jesus came to do, as he says in the passage. Jesus came to shake things up, and he doesn't hold back. It's certainly important that we're uncomfortable at times. Discomfort is a great vehicle for personal and social transformation, both of which Jesus intended to effect. But at the same time, we see the value of those who are there to comfort and to worry and to care. Those people surround Jesus and make it so that he could do the work he came here to do. He introduces us to the sometimes disturbing and uncomfortable truths that he wants us to face. These people around him, I imagine Simon's mother-in-law, for instance, who Jesus healed is just naturally that sort of person who gets up and helps as soon as she can. At least in the passage, Jesus didn't tell her to do anything. She got up and did it herself. So when Jesus' companions find him and go, Jesus, where were you? They're playing a very important role. We all need people to take care of us, and Jesus is no different. We need to know that we're supported in love, truly as a human need. He may not have heard to say it, but I'm sure he appreciates it. We need helpers and warriors to fill that role, to speak that language that Jesus doesn't always seem to use. Sometimes perhaps it's spoken a little crudely by some, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have a family or community to freak out when we disappear. Especially for Jesus, who has a lot of work to do. Those caretakers, those warriors, those mothers are not just appreciated, but are needed. Jesus needed that community. Without them, he could not have done the amazing work that he came to do. As someone who has been in this church for years, I can tell you that our biggest strength is right there in our name, community. Whether we agree or disagree on certain issues, whether we are alike or different in a multitude of ways, we are at our core a beautiful community. Not too long ago, I had a friend who was unable to pay for college and asked if some congregants could help her out financially. She's an excellent singer, so she put on a mini concert or recital, and the generosity of the congregation helps her substantially, at least for a little while. And that's what a community does. It worries about those who need to be worried about. It helps those who need to be helped. It takes care of those people who need to be taken care of. And we at MBCC are great at it. I'm sure those of you who have been here a while can think of at least one time the church was there for you or someone you know. It's certainly been there for me. 
had one of the toughest moments in my life. It was an old church friend and a member of the congregation who was there for me, along with our wonderful pastors. Now, it may seem like I'm pandering at this point, because I certainly know you all well enough to be able to do that after all these years. But I really mean it. It takes a lot to play the role of the helper and caretaker sometimes. But in a community like this, it is so natural. Can you imagine how much Jesus' companions worried about him? How much work it took to be his friend? Well, we are that community. Those companions who waited on Jesus, who freaked out when he left, and upon finding him said, where were you? We were worried sick. The truth is, everyone at different times speaks all the languages. Everyone plays the role of Simon's mother-in-law and the companions and Jesus. Sometimes we are the ones who need help or are struggling. Or the ones who get up after a hard day because they know there's work to be done and people to serve. We do each speak some languages better than others. And it's important that we recognize that. But those concerned caretakers in our lives have one of the most important parts to play. In community, they are the ones who support us when we fear we may fall or when we need that extra help again. So, to all those warriors, to the ones who ask us if we need a blanket or if we've had enough to eat, we owe you a deep gratitude, and we hope that we can learn to speak that language as well as you do. Because you are the ones who keep us going when we may not even realize we have a problem, and the ones who remind us that we are deeply cared about and supported. <coughs> Amen.
in the back with the bread in the basket so that all may participate in this sacrament and remind you that the decision about children's participation is left up to the parent or guardian. If you are unable to come forward, please wait where you are and one of our servers will come to you and serve you your seat. When we speak of community, we speak of an all-inclusive community. And we remember that this is not our table, but Christ's table, and all people are welcome at Christ's table. That Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with friends for a meal. And at the beginning of the meal, he took bread, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and he shared it with his friends. And he said, when you gather, do this in remembrance of me. And when the meal was finished, Jesus took a cup. And he shared that too with his friends. He said, when you partake of this, do so in remembrance of me. <laughs> We gather with bread and with cup. We gather in you to celebrate that community and celebrate the gift of Christ.